Hello there, my fellow clan warriors, and welcome back, after a fairly long time actually, to another dose of Battletech Battlemax lore. After three weeks of non mech lore, I thought it was time to return, for one or maybe even two weeks, to covering some other Battlemax. And today we have a rather fierce and imposing topic, in the form of the mighty Kodiak, also the winner of the poll. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? For some base stats on this big guy, we have... It is an assault mech, weighing at a whopping 100 tons, its top speed is almost 65 kph, and its rounded price is 29,791,000 seabells. The Kodiak is a fast assault mech designed by Clan Ghostbear, as a second line counterpart to the Gladiator. I haven't talked about that one yet, but maybe in the future. Though not taken in the same extreme as other clan totem mechs, the Kodiak does epitomize the Ghost Bear's method of warfare, combining an impressive defensive platform with a surprising amount of speed and firepower. Its massive engine propels the Kodiak to a speed higher than many other assault mechs, while 17.5 tons of compound 12A2 gives it impressive armor protection. Though it mounts an incredible amount of firepower, even the use of 20 double heatsinks cannot prevent overheating problems when they are all fired at once. On the other hand, most mech warriors are taught to use their weapons sparingly, and do love the mech's ability to deliver a massive knockout punch. The Kodiak also incorporates a Garrett L20 as a communication system, and uses the RCA InstaTrack Mark IX for targeting. However, curiously, the claws mounted on both of its arms are purely aesthetic and ceremonial. The vast majority of Kodiaks are used by the Ghost Bears, and indeed the design was exclusive to them in the first years since its introduction. Of those which are found in other Tumans, Clan Snow Raven has the largest share, a payment for their help in relocating to the Inner Sphere. They are followed by Clan Goliath Scorpion and Clan Cloud Cobra. Among the Crusader clans though, only Ice Clan Hellion fields a handful of these battle mechs. As an interesting side note, and proof of the expansion of the Kodiak, at least two of them were found in Smoke Jaguar units on planet Asgard during Operation Bulldog. The main focus of the Kodiak is its 400 rated extra light engine, which allows this 100 ton monster to exceed speeds of over 60 kph. The main armament of the Kodiak consists primarily of a devastating short range weaponry, namely the single series 2 Ultra Autocannon 20 occupying the entire right torso and the twin Streak SRM6s situated in the left torso. These powerful weapons enable the Kodiak to savage any foe, but considerable care must be taken with the limited ammunition at the mech warrior's disposal. The mech does supplement its primary weaponry with 8 series 2A ER medium lasers, four above each hand set into a claw-like array. The ER medium lasers, powered by the fusion power plant, provide hefty firepower long after the ammunition has run dry. While the Kodiak is a cruel opponent close up, it is not defenseless at long range either. Directly beneath the engine is a series 7K ER large laser, allowing it to soften up targets as it advances in for the kill. Some variants of this guy include also, you should note that there aren't a lot of pictures on the Kodiak overall, so do take the pictures as suggestive and not exact representations. The Kodiak 2 A more mobile variant which first saw action during the Combine Ghost Bear War on Richmond. It was an attempt to solve the original's heat problems and increase its mobility by mounting jump jets, enabling it to leap up to 120 meters in place of four medium lasers and one missile launcher. The Kodiak 3 This variant was made by Clan Snow Raven in the mid 3060s, and it turns the mech into an anti aircraft platform. Removing all but four of the arm mounted medium lasers and reducing the number of heat sinks to 14, frees up enough room for a pair of LBX autocannon 20s 
each one with three tons of ammo and an advanced targeting computer. The Kodiak 4 This one mounts an Artemis 4 enhanced LRM-20 and a pair of ER medium lasers in each arm. For more short-range firepower, an LB-20X autocannon is carried in the right torso. The Kodiak 5 This one is a dedicated close-range brawler. It adds three more heat sinks to help it cool down, as it employs nine ER medium lasers and two ER large lasers. A Gauss rifle is in the right torso. The Kodiak V1 Though very powerful, the original Kodiak did lack sufficient long-range weaponry and didn't come even close to mounting its full complement of armor. In 3095, Khan Ragnar of Clan Ghostbear charged the technician cast with developing a variant that could resolve these problems. This new one sported two Type 20 Great Bow LRM-20s, one Type 10 Short Bow LRM-10, one Clan Mark 8 ERPPC, and replaces the 8 medium lasers with 8 ER small lasers. The version also adds jump jets to the design, allowing the mech to jump up to 90 meters. A famous custom variant of the Kodiak is known as the Kodiak Kale. It is the mech of the second Diron Regulars commander, Taisa Kale Schulz Tanaka. It was recovered from a battlefield on Diron and re-equipped with Inner Sphere and Clan technology. Keeping the standard clan endosteel chassis and double heat sinks, the techs replaced the XL engine with a standard unit. This reduced the max top speed to 54 kph, but increased survivability. Most of the clan weapons were also removed, only a trio of ER medium lasers in the left arm and a pair of streak SRM-6 launchers in the left torso remain. The Kodiak Kale uses an autocannon 10 and a heavy PPC for the main hitting power. These are backed up by the clan weapons and a pair of Inner Sphere ER medium lasers and another pair of Inner Sphere medium lasers. The most important addition to the Kale version is the electronic suite. A Beagle active probe in the right torso can spot enemy forces, while a C3 master computer in the left torso allows it to feed targeting data to the supporting units. The Kodiak 2 not to be confused with the Kodiak 2 mentioned earlier. To avoid confusion though, I'm gonna call this one the Mark II, as it is a different design and not another version of the first one. Designed for Clan Ghost Bear, the Kodiak Mark II is an assault class battle mech, and was first produced during the last decade of the 31st century. It was engineered so it could serve as both a command mech and a powerful assault mech, via the fitting of a heavy arsenal of missiles and a large array of energy weaponry. It was based on the fourth variant of the original Kodiak. The Mark II would become a favorite design within Clan Ghost Bear, being produced on Al Shane at the Al Shane Weapon Factory. One of its most notable actions was during a border skirmish on the world of Jabuka, where elements of Clan Jade Falcon's 53rd Battle Cluster tangled with the 2nd Bear Regulars commanded by Star Colonel Anton Hall from the cockpit of a Kodiak II. The mech would show its perseverance in the face of the 53rd Artillery Bombardment of the Star Colonel surviving units, and did end up being the decisive factor which won the battle for the Ghost Bears. The Mark II is known for its command facilities and its legendary endurance. It carries 19 tons of Al Shane weapons forging AD-56 standard armor, giving it heavy resistance against weapons fire directed at it. At the heart of the machine is a 400 rated extra light fusion engine, which, while not as fast as other designs, its weight savings allow the mech to carry its substantial weapons loadout. The Mark II's long-range weaponry revolves around a pair of arm-mounted 20-tubed long-range missile launchers backed up by a single 10-tube model found in the left torso. The missile launchers are guided by Artemis IV fire control systems, allowing the mech to deliver accurate fire on the target. Backing up the missile launchers is an ERPPC, found in the right torso. While it does need to close into brawling range to use them, the Mark II also has 8 ER small lasers split between the mech's two arm actuators. 
all the mech energy weapons are tied into a targeting computer in the center torso. Now, if their naming wasn't confusing enough already, there's also a second version of the Mark II, which for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna call the Mark II II. The second variant of the Mark II is known for its resilience as well as its accurate weaponry. It was introduced in early 32nd century, and it utilizes a number of advanced technology, including three torso-mounted, hard-gel-free self-repair systems. Aside from the inclusion of these, this version of the Mark II differs only slightly from the original. While retaining most of the mech weaponry and the targeting computer, its long-range weapons are swapped out for a pair of Streak LRM-20 launchers, while the 10-tube launcher is dropped. A notable pilot of this kind of mech is Star Captain Caden. This guy first gained notice as part of the 4th Nova Cat Regulars deep raid against the Alliance world of Lyon in 3063. During the Dominion Combine War, Caden, furious that the 4th Nova Cat Regulars would be left out of the Nova Cat counteroffensive against the Ghost Bears, won a trial of grievance against Star Colonel Sal and immediately turned around and won a trial of position into the 5th Novacat Regulars. Though he did lose his Spirit Cat, a vulture battle mech on the battlefields of Marawi against the Bears, he did come away with the only known Kodiak deployed within Clan Novacat at the time. Now a star captain in the Novacat Leggers cluster, Caden and his new Spirit Bear anxiously await the opportunity to strike once more at the Ghost Bears. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Kodiak Assault Battle Mech for today. A rather iconic looking mech thanks to its claws, but also extremely deadly thanks to its massive firepower. Is the Kodiak among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always with these videos, you are very welcome to express any thoughts, opinions and stories you may have on it in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you want to help me keep making these videos, you can visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you an awesome day. This is GDN signing off.